Is ADP a potential buy now? We're using the select six analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating a fair value for automatic data processing, better known as ADP. Then we're giving a rating to the business. This analysis is going to be intense, but it's going to be worth it. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing ADP for your stock portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, how has ADP stock performed? Trades Right now, ADP trades for $248.02 per share. Year to date, their stock price is up 4.5%. This trails the S&P 500, which is up 16.5%. In the last decade, it's a different story. ADP is compounding at 13% annually. They're beating the market. Going back before the global financial crisis, this is the same case. In the last 18 and a half years, ADP is compounding at 10% annually, beating the market in their stock price alone. The company also pays out dividends. Right now, ADP has a 1.93% dividend yield. ADP is a dividend aristocrat and likely a future dividend king. They've grown their dividends for more than 25 years. Their average yield is added on to any returns in their stock price, meaning they've handedly beat the market in the last two decades. ADP trades just under $30 below their 52-week high. The company's up $47 from their 52-week low. Just over 1% of their shares are sold short. ADP's a huge business. They have a $102 billion market cap. But the burning question is, why should we be paying close attention to ADP? ADP is a provider of payroll and human capital management solutions, servicing the full scope of businesses from micro to global enterprises. ADP was established in 1949 and serves over 1 million clients primarily in the United States. ADP's employer service segment offers payroll, human capital management solutions, human resources outsourcing, insurance, and retirement services. The smaller but faster growing professional employer organization segment provides HR outsourcing solutions to small and mid-sized businesses through a co-employment model. Now let's dive deep into their numbers. Metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. A typical business earns 7% returns on capital. Looking for a benchmark that's double this can build in margin of safety based on the quality of the business. ADP's earned huge returns on capital in all five of these years. Since their fiscal 2021, their returns have really skyrocketed. They earned 64% returns in their last fiscal year. When these are averaged out in a given year, they earned 45% returns on capital. That's more than six times better than a typical business. This is a huge check on our first metric. Metric number two, we want to see growth to support their high returns. We're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth. These all need to be up for this to be a check. We'll also include their last 12 months worth of numbers, which aren't shown on this chart. In this time, ADP has grown their revenues by 27.5%, their net incomes or their earnings have grown by 49%, and the company's free cash flows have led the charge, they've grown by 55%. This is solid and stable growth across the board. Another check here on metric number two, it's great to see the company's net incomes and free cash flows are growing faster than their revenues. This means the company is getting more out of their fixed assets, they're getting operating leverage as their margins have expanded. Metric number three, we're looking for earnings per share growth. This looks at ADP from the view of an individual shareholder. In this time, we learn their earnings or their net incomes have grown by 49%. ADP has also bought back 5% of their shares outstanding, increasing ownership percentage for existing shareholders in the business without them having to spend a dime. Between these share buybacks and this earnings growth, they've grown their earnings per share. This is another check on metric number three. Metric number four, we want to see free cash flow per share growth. This is almost the same story. ADP's free cash flows are up more than 55%. They've also bought back 5% of their shares outstanding. This means they've grown their free cash flows per share. With another check here on metric number four, through four metrics, ADP is perfect on our analysis. Can the business keep this up? But there's still one vital piece missing. You might think nailing returns on capital and having good growth is the key, but we haven't touched on the one thing that I truly believe sets ADP apart, which is having these without using a lot of debt. Metric number five, we want ADP's net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the sum of their free cash flows in their last five fiscal years. Right now, ADP has $1.4 billion of net debt. In this time, they've generated $15.2 billion of free cash flow. That's a lot more than their debt position. ADP is very easily able to support their debt. It seems they're in a very healthy financial position. This is another check on metric number five. 
They've generated more than $4 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months alone. Flawless through our first five metrics, does ADP have what it takes to go six for six and be a perfect select six stock? We'll find out when we get to our valuations right after we cover our bonus. We want ADP's dividends to be supported by their free cash flows. ADP's a dividend aristocrat and likely a future dividend king. They've grown their dividends for more than 25 years. Right now, they pay a 1.93% dividend yield. In all five of these years, no surprise they've continued growing their dividend, and they've supported their dividends using their free cash flows in all five years. This also includes today. It's exactly what we're looking for. This is a solid check on our bonus, as ADP is likely poised to become a dividend king in the future. Now let's look at our valuations. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want ADP's average five-year free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It's the first of two different ways we're estimating a fair value for ADP. Right now, the company has a $103.5 billion enterprise value. This accounts for both their market cap and their net debt position. It looks at ADP similar to it being a private business. We learned in the last five years, they generated $15.2 billion of free cash flow, meaning they generate just over $3 billion of free cash flow in a given year. When that's divided by their enterprise value, we get around a 2.9% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. On a current basis, ADP produced $4 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months. When that's divided by their $103.5 billion enterprise value, it gives us a 3.8% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. That's right about in line with the yield from the 10-year treasury, yet it's down from the risk premium we're seeking. This means, coming in on metric number six, this is our first and only X of the day on ADP. Don't just throw the business out. We still need to estimate their fair value per share and give our rating. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that, in my opinion, is the main reason to analyze ADP. This takes us to using a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. A DCF model is based on the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. ADP has been very predictable in their past, given their role as a payroll company. We're using their current free cash flows and taking historical growth assumptions to project these into the future. It's up to you to figure out if these will be accurate or not for ADP. Assuming the business grows their current free cash flows by 11% annually for each of the next 10 years. Then in the following decade, assuming this growth rate is cut in half and they grow at 5.5% annually, we won't add in their tangible book value that's likely skewed based on how the accounting is done for their share buybacks. Since the mid-2000s, ADPs reduced their share count by about 30% overall. This has contributed to their market-beating performance and is likely good for long-term shareholders. If we want a 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett looks for from his investments, if today's valuation multiples are the same 20 years into the future, an estimate of ADP's fair value is around $111 per share. That's down around $140 from their current stock price. Keep some key points in mind. While they've outperformed the market in the past two decades, this fair value is not taking into account any multiple expansion. It's solely based on the company's free cash flows. This discount rate is also a few percentage points better than how ADP has performed annually. It includes both their average dividend yield and any gains in their stock price. As companies get larger, they tend to grow at slower rates. That's something else you'd want to keep in mind. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. In just a minute, we'll give our rating to ADP, but we need to address something first. We've covered the numbers, but the qualitative factors of their business may be even more important. Why don't we figure out what these are? Looking at the factors supporting a long thesis, number one, ADP benefits from high client switching costs, a scale-based cost advantage, intangible brand assets, and a powerful referral network. Number two, despite facing fierce competitive pressures and undergoing forced platform migrations, ADP has retained high revenue retention and improved operating margins over the past decade. Number three, ADP has a strong record of returning capital to shareholders through dividends and share repurchases. But we'd be remiss if we didn't cover the negatives of their business as well. Looking at the factors supporting a short thesis, number one, payroll and human capital management software is becoming increasingly commoditized, amplifying pricing pressure for providers. 
Number two, it's expected ADP must maintain high levels of investment in software development and innovation to combat increasing competitive pressure. Number three, ADP is expected to maintain elevated investment in sales and implementation over the next decade as it rolls out its new public cloud native solutions and continues to consolidate its platforms. ADP also just acquired the company Sora. Sora is a low-code automation tool provider. This enhances their integration capabilities. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of ADP's qualitative factors. Now let's give our rating. We learned in analyzing ADP that this dividend aristocrat performed very well on our analysis. They earned huge returns on capital. They've grown solidly in the last five years. They've also bought back some shares. They generate a ton of free cash flow compared to the small amount of debt they use in their business. They've also easily supported a healthy and growing dividend. Keep in mind this isn't financial advice. The company's free cash flow to enterprise value yields may or may not look attractive compared to the yield of the 10-year treasury. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, if you want a 15% rate of return, you believe those assumptions. If their current valuation multiples are the same 20 years into the future and you recognize the factors we covered, an estimate for ADP's fair value is around $111 per share. The company last traded near those levels in September of 2017. You need to be patient. When we look at all the factors of our analysis, ADP looks like a great candidate for further research. Dig into the company if you're interested. Thanks so much for learning about ADP with me. Be sure to like this video, comment your thoughts below, and subscribe to the channel for more.